In this video, I am going to attempt to do the best I can to explain how you can repair floor damage that is done to the subflooring. You might have some of the framing. You might have some joist that needs to be removed. And again, this is a question that was sent to me a while ago. Hopefully I haven't taken too long to get back to the individual. Now the gray area would represent the damage. Let's just pretend like this is termite damage or dry rot from water damage. So here we're looking at the framing. We have the walls braced up and I'll put a link here to or I'll put a link at the end of this video so that you can see how we braced up the walls. You will need to support the framing if you are going to be working on load bearing walls. You need to support anything that um, you're going to be removing that uh, has some weight on it. Here's the drywall. So this is what it would look like, uh, what you'd be looking at, let's just say. You might have the walls here with the damage and you don't get to see what it looks like. Um, like this. And that's the nice thing about these three-dimensional drawings. I can move stuff around and uh, install stuff. And uh, this is what it would look like on the other side. So the damage we're looking at here is on, on one side of a wall or in one room. And of course it is in another room. This is a load-bearing wall. This is not a load-bearing wall. The first step will be to remove the drywall in the damaged area. And um, I hate to say it, but sometimes it's going to be better to go a little farther back in uh, some of these spots uh, and uh, to give yourself a little more room to work with. And I'll leave that up to you. That'll be your, that'll be your judgment call. But here we can see the damage is underneath the framing. The frame and plates are not damaged. This might not be the case. A lot of times if we have water damage on the plywood or the floor sheathing um, and it's going underneath the wall, there's a good chance that the framing plates are going to be damaged also. After we have removed the drywall, we will want to remove the framing plates that are going to be in the way of the removal of the subflooring. You will also need to remove the door in this particular case because we can see the damage is going all the way over almost to the center of the door. So again, framing plates will need to be removed and if the studs are damaged, then you will need to remove more of the drywall and replace the studs also. Now, if it's a non-bearing wall, you might be able to do something different. You might be able to scab something onto the side of it. If it's a bearing wall, then the studs probably are going to need to be replaced. After that, we will need to remove the plywood and or the subflooring. And uh, again, what you will cut away, we'll I'll leave that up to you. Try to get it to where it gets, where you cut it half onto a joist. A lot of times you'll be removing the plywood and uh, or the damaged plywood and you only got to cut another inch or two more to be right on the center of a joist. If that's the case, great. If not, then um, as in the situation over here, you can see that the plywood is about six inches away from the joist. We'll need to block that later. So here's what we're looking at now with the damage, partial damage to the floor joist. Um, which of course is creating structural problems and of course the rim of the outside which of course this the rim joist and the framing plate or the base plate sill plate is um, damaged also so all of this is going to need to be removed you will need to install a supporting wall if you're working under a basement or another floor you might have a three three level or uh, might be working on a second story floor here. This kind of the system here, basically um, you can use uh, parts of it to fix different parts of a building that are damaged. If you have a crawl space and you're working with something that's uh, 18 inches, 
or two foot wouldn't be a bad idea to install a wall underneath this or some type of a system with blocks do not forget that if you are shoring up the walls above if you're showing the walls up above you're going to need some type of support underneath the framing to support to carry the load of the roof for example if you're using another one of these systems and again there will be a link at the back of the video to provide you with more information about using walls to shore up um, load bearing um, home framing systems whether it's a ceiling or a roof you will need to cut the damaged joist another view go on top you can see that the sill plate has been removed and the rim joist has been removed also now one of the biggest problems uh, um, with this method if you're not going to remove the stucco you're not going to remove the exterior siding whatever it is um, you could end up with some paper some damage to the building paper stuff like that you're gonna have to repair that and I'm not gonna go over that in this video but I might have other um, options for you um, on the website go to the website to the section on stucco repairs and see if you can find something if not I'd be glad to make another video for you sill plate framing plywood half on the joist to make it easy for the next repair now it's time to put start putting it back together I'm going to leave the colors of the repaired joist and uh, framing members the same this would be a piece of treated wood obviously if you have treated uh, if you're using treated throughout the rest of the house so we would replace the sill plate and the rim joist then the floor joist themselves take a look at it from the bottom replace the floor joists if you want to use one of our other methods feel free to check out some of our floor repair areas that's in the framing repair section on the website go to the website go click on repairs on the upper menu and then click on framing should give you some more options on how you can fix this ceiling joist will be nailed to the other ceiling joist to carry the load and of course another view there here's the um, additional framing I was referring to to get some support for the plywood you could simply put a block here and then run another um, joist temporary joist again I don't know if that would even be considered a filler board something to where you can nail both sides of the plywood into after you install the plywood you can simply nail each side of the plywood to get a nice tie there that would be the plywood installed something else you're going to need to keep in mind when you're laying out the walls I didn't do it here so I'm pointing it out it'd be hard to get this piece of plywood in here we've got to slide it in um, three and a half inches into this area here so this particular 2x4 not, might need to be removed it might need to be cut up so that you can get the plywood at an angle to slip it in here um, try to uh, imagine how this plywood is going to be um, reassembled and, and uh, to consider the placement of these walls these walls might need to be moved back like I said or the wall studs some of the wall studs might need to be removed or the plywood might need to be ripped down the center and um, and then installed in two pieces keep in mind that some structural components um, especially floor sheathing has a minimum distance a lot of structural engineers might require a 24 um, inch minimum width here and if you're replacing replacing a piece of plywood that's only 30 inches wide you're not going to be able to um, cut it down the middle so this might require you to um, to remove the, the sheet of plywood all the way to to the back um, 
of the uh, or the original piece of plywood so my main point is that you might need to put a little more thought into this part of the project taking the plywood out isn't going to be a problem you can cut it up into pieces putting it back in could be so you might need to remove this stud or cut it to get it at the right angle or cut it into smaller pieces or um, uh, cut the section of the flooring a little larger remove a little remove more of it so that you can make the repair um, correctly to where it's going to give you a structural tie I hope that makes sense last step on the list will be to replace the framing plates and any of the two by fours that um, you have damaged or were damaged or needed to be um, cut to install the plywood then you would reinstall the door you can you can do the drywall before the door that's fine and then you are done with this type of repair trim it out paint it um, I'm sure you know how to put the floor trim or the door trim on floor trim redo the flooring and you are done so anyway that is it for this video